Hello and welcome to another video. Today I have a quite an exciting video as I'm going to be talking about Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. So I was originally going to do this as a reading vlog so I have got clips of me reading it which I'll kind of thread in as I'm talking but it didn't really work out because I literally just marathoned it. I read it so quickly. I think I read it, well, I mean it's nearly 800 pages, 799 pages long and for someone that typically reads between 50 to 100 pages a day this should have taken me eight days to read it took me about four and a half so i marathoned it i read like over 200 pages most days yeah yeah i read it very quickly so i did do an unboxing of this because this is the tour edition for the uk so sarah j mass was meant to be coming to the uk to do a tour and a talk and a book signing for certain people but obviously because she sells out and has massive auditoriums of people coming to see her she only does like a raffle for people that were going to meet her so I probably wouldn't have met her anyway but obviously because of coronavirus that got cancelled so the people that bought the tickets to go into the tour had the opportunity to buy this online and it came with a few bits and bobs as well so I did do a little unboxing so I shall put that in here so today it arrived the special edition of House of Blood and Earth and I'm gonna open it now I just whack it open. Oh, the waft of new smelling books. Dun dun dun. So this is the book. It is quite nice, isn't it? Tour edition. Oh, it even says tour edition 2020. That's sad that it's not actually the tour, and I didn't go on the tour. But the thought was there. And then it says, through love, all is possible. Let's hope that's true. So, oh, it does still have it. So this was one of my favourite things in the original edition, was that it had these end pages, because I just think they're lovely. I still love the front cover, and this is quite a bland front cover. I kind of wish it had maybe the dust jacket of the other one. However, I do have, it's like one I made earlier, the special edition of the Throne of Glass, book and they go rather nicely together like they do go quite nice together they've got the gold and this doesn't have a dust jacket either so oh my gosh I'm so happy oh I can't wait to read this oh and it's got a signed book plate by her so she didn't physically sign it herself but you know she's a busy gal okay the pages are paper thin and that was totally expected because I'm currently reading The Pride of the Orange Tree. So this is Pride of the Orange Tree. This is House of Blood and City. Okay. Now I'm confused actually. I thought it was called House of Blood and Earth, but this literally just says Crescent City. So have I been trying to correct myself? Oh, I'm so confused. What's this book called? <laughs> anyway, got distracted there. But this is 799 pages. So that's quite a long book. I would say that is quite a substantial book. Even though it looks pretty much the same as any other fantasy hardback. This, however, is, let's just get a bit of perspective, over 200 pages less than that in they are the same size. This book, which is looking a little bit worse for wear, but it's okay, it's well loved, is five pages longer than this book. And that is the size difference. Now I like a thicker page, not going to lie, but isn't they incredible what they can do with a little bit of tweaking on how they present the book? That might just be me being weird and thinking that's actually quite interesting. But there you go. Ooh, and it's got one of these fancy old things. Whenever books have this, I always forget to use them anyway. So we shall put that in page one. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Oh, oh, I nearly... I nearly signed off there. However, dun dun dun. Uh, that was slightly disappointing, but we, we will show anyway. So we have a sticker, or not a sticker, a tattoo, like the stick on water tattoos, that says, Through love, all is possible. And then the badge also says, Through love, all is possible. So I've got a little badge and a little tattoo how lovely so yeah that was the unboxing so yes for those that don't know crescent city follows a girl called bryce 
who lives in this city where all these kind of mythical fantasy creatures live. She's half fae, half human. So in this city, humans live there, werewolves live there, fae live there, vampires live there, angels live there. There's a whole medley of fantasy creatures that live in this one city and it's just normalised, it's completely normal and it is an urban fantasy so they do have technology, they do have phones etc and she has a friend who is the head of one of the packs of werewolves and that's kind of what the first hundred or so pages is on so they have a friendship that they met through college and they're kind of just having a good time living life like people do taking drugs, being a bit crazy and then one day something drastically changes and that kind of snowballs the rest of the story and it could turns into a kind of murder investigation type plot and that's the plot of the story so I'm not giving too much away I didn't read the synopsis before going in because I watched Becca in the books one of her reading vlogs that she picked this up on and she said not to do that because there's something in the blurb that completely spoils it I haven't read it since even finishing it just because I completely forgot but I think it's what happens at that point that kind of snowballs the rest of the story and that happens all 60 or 70 or so pages, maybe 80 pages, some as a certain amount of pages into the book it happens and I do generally think that would have been a spoiler if I had read the synopsis. I would, I would advise against reading the synopsis. I never tend to read synopsis anyway for books. I probably would have for this one just because it is so anticipated and I want to know as much about it as possible but I didn't. So basically just a fantasy murder mystery that's quite good. So one thing I would say is that if you've read any of Sarah J Mass's other books this is an adult fantasy therefore she has hyped up the swearing, hyped up the drug usage and hyped up the sexual scenes or at least the terminology to describe them. She holds nothing back in this. There is definitely quite vivid descriptions and words that you would not use in a YA fantasy to describe appendages, <laughs> if you get what I mean. So if you don't like that in books, obviously feel free to skip over them or not pick it up at all because if that's not your thing, don't go for it. I mean, it's not overly done. There's maybe three or four scenes in this that have that in it, so it's not overly done, but there you go. You might just want to skip over those. It is also I would say not a typical fantasy in the fact that the way it is written it's very much more relaxed it's more kind of an easy kind of it's definitely I don't know how to describe it it's definitely a YA adult fantasy if that makes sense like you can kind of tell that it's a YA author writing a fantasy novel the feel definitely has that kind of YA undertone where it's slightly less uh, I don't know how to say it without being really offensive because I'm not trying to be offensive to Sarah J Mass. Like it's a style, it's your choice and how you chose to write. This is definitely easier to binge read is kind of how I would describe it. It's a binge reading book whereas some fantasies are a bit more slow, a bit more gritty like in the actual writing style that it takes longer to kind of get through. It's just a little bit more dense that way or maybe a bit more literary even though I don't like using that word because all books are literature. But if you get what I mean. So about the actual book itself, this had an array of emotions. I'll show you the bit that I got, the bit that I said was a spoiler, if you read the synopsis, I did a reaction to, so I'll put that in now. Oh my god. So I just finished chapter five. Like, I don't even know what happened there. It was just, what the hell? Oh my god, what just happened? Like the whole setup of the book has now completely changed. Like what? What? I don't even, I don't even know. I'm just, what? Yeah, so that was a shock. I couldn't get over that. I was a bit, I was a bit shocked by that. And it totally changed the plot of the story or where I thought the plot was going. To be fair, like, up until that point I had no idea where it was going and then it obviously gave it a clear direction and I definitely think it was a good direction like I really enjoyed the murder mystery side of it and that obviously drew in the romance of it and I did like the romance I was like not as loving it as I do some of Sarah J Mass's romance I won't say exactly which one it is in case you haven't read Throne of Glass but the later romance of the main romance like the later later not the 
the third one <laughs> that she goes through, I definitely, I rooted for that one like I've never rooted for any other ones. But this I didn't necessarily as much, I definitely was there for it. And then when the other spoil, it's really hard to do a spoiler free review for this book because there are so many plot twists. There's so, so many different like, changes, surprises, plot, I just, uh, there was a lot of twists and a lot of turns, a lot of surprises. It was crazy. It was a bit of a pinball at the end there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, so I'll just talk about some negatives that I had and then I'll go on to the positives so we can end on a positive note because that's always better. But some of the things I didn't like particularly in this or I didn't think necessarily were done well, I feel like there was a bit too much sexualization of women and a bit too much of the typical domineering masculine character which Sarah J Maas is kind of known for, I suppose. Like, that's all her characters are kind of like that, that are male, and all her female characters are very much like that. But there was a lot of it in this. And the main character, she was constantly kind of talked about in respect to her sexual, like, prowess to the man. I think she was honestly actually trying not to do that, or trying to show it as a negative, and the kind of male domineering role as a negative as well because they would call them like alpha holes as obviously a play on words but I don't think it worked like you can do that without saying you I, I don't know why you'd make all your characters the same kind of typical masculine domineering large physical man and then just slag them off for it like have that character in there show the positives of that character but also have a variation of male characters to show the positives in that don't just have them all the same and slag them off for it. That's that's just what I I didn't quite like. Like, it's fine to have those male roles in there because there are males that are like that. That's true. So just show that and have that as an accepted matter. You don't need to slag them off for it all the time. But you also need to put in other variation of roles in there. Literally you have no idea if that makes any sense or if you even agree with that, but maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Who knows? But there you go. Yeah, so a little bit more of a variation within the male roles. They're all very physically strong, very domineering, and I get that's the kind of element of fae kind of personality that has in there, and same with all those kind of fantasy creatures, but I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just a negative I had that I felt the women were sexualized a lot and always talked about within their sexuality, or talked about in relation to their sexuality an awful lot when it wasn't necessary. Obviously there are moments when you can do that when say you're in a love scene or you find like you're admitting that you're attracted to someone in a book and that's the start of a romance. You can talk about how sexually attractive they are. But it was a lot. There we go. That was that's pretty much the only negative thing that I have and it's maybe what's preventing me give it full five stars just because I can't really condone that to its full extent. If it wasn't played upon quite so much I probably would have enjoyed those aspects of it more done in a dull like a diluted amount because I don't dislike those aspects in books like sometimes I quite enjoy them but they have to be done well they have to be done in a non-offensive way and not overly done like it was here but apart from that I did quite like the romance I think it was done quite well it did grow quite well and it wasn't like definitely not insta love so if you hate that don't worry, it's not that. And it did get me reading, it kept me reading. So some good things now. Positives, positives. I really enjoyed how the fantasy world was built. I really like the urban setting, which is something I don't typically like in fantasies. I don't think it's often done well. However, this was because I think as opposed to it being fantasy on the down low, as if it's like trying to hide, which I don't think is very believable. Maybe because I am a human, but I feel like if there was vampires and werewolves and all that, they would be ruling the world like we would not be ruling the world we're not that great as humans like as we can tell we're all locked inside now so if there was they totally would be ruling so i liked how that was how this was in the book and like, it showed that humans were inferior to vampires and wells and obviously that caused tension and there was problems with that and the war even was building so i did enjoy that i found that really unbelievable and i liked that kind of aspects of it and the kind of play on what it's like to be in class but using different animals or fantasy creatures to do that so the angels in this circumstance are at the head of the kind of hierarchy and then different creatures obviously go down and then you've got humans at the bottom that are trying to rebel and stuff like that 
So I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the kind of uncertainty and the structure of the whole po politics and stuff like that and how it's all playing out. And the ending. Oh my gosh, that ending got me. I cried multiple times throughout that ending. I would say the ending starts about 100 or so pages from the end and I could not put it down. I did have to put it down because my dinner was finished just when it got to such a tense moment, as it always does, but I could not put it down. Like, I had to come back straight away and just continue reading it. So I did cry. I will put a clip in in a second of me crying because why not? Let's just do it. Okay, that got me. <laughs> I'm crying quite a bit now. That was sad. I didn't expect it to get me crying. I'm filming on my phone, sorry, because I haven't got any memory on my memory card and I don't know where I'm looking because I can't even figure out where the camera is. So the quality is probably really bad as well, but that was really sad. I don't know why it got me so much, but it did. Mm. I've been really crap at vlogging this read -a readathon. Like, I've got 100 pages left, and last time I spoke to you, I had I was 100 pages in. So it's not really a reading vlog. I'll do a big wrap up when I finish it. I thought I just say that, that made me really sad. I don't know what to say. I don't want to spoil it because I think I am going to do it as non-spoiler. But if you read it or if you're reading it. It really shouldn't have made me that sad. I don't know why it's made me this sad. But the events that finish on page 706. This is the UK. I don't know if it's the same. I think it is the same. If I have a look at how many pages there are. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same. But around 700 pages. I'll give you the chapter number. That would be better. Because it will be the same chapters, won't they? Chapter 80. Or 79 to 80. That really got me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Me crying on camera. You're welcome. <laughs> and I just realised it's not 80 at all. It's 79. Just to let you know. <laughs> End of 79. It got me. <laughs> so the thing is, at the ending, there were so many goodbyes. Like, people kept saying goodbye as they went off to do these really big heroic things where they were all going to die. Some of them did die, some of them don't die, so you won't know which ones are going to die. But they all went off and they all had these big meaningful goodbyes before they did it. And they just got me so badly. Like, I can't do goodbyes. No, I can't, I can't handle them. So, I cried a lot. That was the first goodbye, if you'll know. Hopefully you will know. That was the first goodbye. To one of my favourite characters, I thought she was a great character. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say anymore. But it did make me cry, which I always think is good. If you can get so invested in a book and the characters of the book that when they die you cry, you're on to a winner. So yes. Overall, I did actually really enjoy this book. I am going to give it maybe a 4, four stars, 4.5 stars. It would be nearly a 5, but I just can't do it. I hate giving half stars, but it's better than a 4 stars, but I just can't morally give it a 5 stars. So... I would recommend you reading this. If those things in books really do uh, annoy you, I wouldn't. Because obviously you're not going to enjoy it and it's just going to frustrate you. If you can read them, decide that actually I don't like that aspect of it and move on. Go for it. If that kind of thing doesn't bother you at all, go for it. So those are my recommendations. I love this quote now because of this book. I mean, it's a good quote anyway, but the ending of the book just solidified this quote as an amazing quote. I know some people have decided straight off the bat they're just not going to read this and not going to try it, which is fair enough. I also know some people didn't like the swearing in it. They found it a little bit jarring because there is quite a lot of it, especially in the actual body of the text, like not just in the speech. And that can be jarring for some people. Like I know books that that has actually brought me out of the story, but I think in this, because it was consistent throughout, and it kind of felt like it fit with the voice of the main character. I didn't think that it did. And there are multiple points of views in this. There's one main one, but there's just like a few kind of thrown in just to fill in background pieces. And each of those voices are really recognisable. Sarah J Maas is very good at doing that. 
they all feel like individual voices and you can tell who they are without even knowing the name. So to me that wasn't a problem, but if you don't like swearing in books, maybe you will find that difficult. But there you go. So yes, if you liked this review, please let me know. And if you like me and the books that I talk about and the things that I talk about, please subscribe to my channel because I'd love you. It would be very much appreciated. Let me know what you thought. If you don't, then that's fair. You don't have to. Most people don't. But there you go. And I shall see you in my next video.